This is a Redemptor Dreadnought. And I know that now because I'm basically an expert in Space Marine and Warhammer things. Also, I am your dad and welcome to making the Warhammer community upset again. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted my Ultramarines Redemptor Dreadnought. I have no idea what this guy is, but he definitely looks like a robot this time. Now in the previous videos, I've made about painting Space Marines. Of course, I got everything wrong. This time, I'm going to make sure it's all right. This little dude is the pack lunch carrier of the entire army. This is why they need one of these, because he has the biggest backpacks of all the Space Marines. And if you want pack lunch for your army, you're going to need one of these dudes. And yes, I've already showed you this technique of how I paint my Ultramarines. However, I'm going to show you every single unit that I paint just because I can. So if you are perhaps considering starting your own Ultramarine army, then perhaps you want to consider clicking the like button and maybe giving a subscribe perhaps even click that little notification bell. As we all know, for every new subscriber that I get, I will have one more new subscriber. And now let's stop talking rubbish about Space Marines and get straight into how I painted this Dreadnought. You remember when I said that I wasn't gonna paint blue Space Marine things too much? Well, that was a lie. I'm gonna paint a lot of blue Space Marine things since my army is blue Space Marines. But this specific model was given to me by another artist. He wanted to see what my painting style would look like on something a bit more straight and edgy. Something like a robot. And yes, this is not a robot. However, it definitely still looks like a freaking robot. So I'm going to call it a big space robot boy. And there is a bit of a special person inside of it who is on a lot of steroids and basically he just runs this thing around and smashes aliens like you don't care yes i spoke a lot of crap over this part of the video and that is because you've already seen this done before in this case i'm still using the volumetric highlighting what i'm trying to do is separate each panel so if i do a shade from one side i'm going to do the shade from the opposite side so that you get a good contrast between each panel from black to white. I'm then going to come back in and I'm going to use an oil wash to give that a lot more depth. This time I'm not using the lazy way and I'm going to make my oil wash. If you haven't done this before it's so easy you will actually kick yourself once you find out how easy this technique is and you don't only have to do this with black you can buy any color oil and do you remember those little pots of washes that you bought before? Well one of these tubes of oil makes about 47,000 of those little pots. That is correct maths. I did the calculations. If you buy one of these tubes and a bottle of white spirits, you will have wash for so long, you will never be able to run out of it. You can also get any color you want. Don't forget that. So go look at your local art store or craft store and look for some decent oil paints and just friggin' add them to your collection of paints. This time I was a little bit sloppier than I was in previous ones. It's probably not the best way to be, but just try to get it into all the creases and crevices. You can come back later and you can wipe off this with a sponge or an earbud or anything, just so long as you don't leave it to dry for too long. Oh, why do I have a stitch? Who, may, who gets a stitch while doing a voiceover? The main thing I can say about cleaning up this oil wash is it depends on what you're doing with it. In my case, I'm trying to create a good base for my see-through colors to go over the top. The colors that I'm gonna lay over the top of this base coat are gonna be transparent. So I want a good undercoat that's gonna show through those colors. If you are gonna use this, say for example, over the top of a textured fabric or something on a larger model, you can use the same technique and you can take off as much as you want or leave as much as you want on the fabric that you're busy cleaning up. So it's a really great way of creating depth if you have a lot of texture on your model and in this specific case there is a lot of nooks and crannies as it is a lot of mechanical parts on this guy so i wanted to make sure that everything inside those cracks remain black and everything that's on the outside is as white as it can be with the gradients and everything that i had added from the airbrush stage i sprayed talazar blue over the top of this robot boy in this case i'm gonna just try and aim this from the top only because i want to get all those light 
white areas covered in a good solid film of this Talazar blue. And once that it fully dried, I'm going to then work on the ink layers and the ink layer is basically just azure blue sprayed into the shadows from the bottom. One of the commenters on a previous video asked what is the difference between putting the wash before the blue or after the blue and the easiest way to explain it is the wash is black but by putting the blue that's translucent over the top of that, I'm not having a black line in the panels. What I'm actually ending up with is a dark, deep blue line instead. So it helps to tie things together a little bit more and doesn't look as stark over the top of the model. It just makes things look smoother. Before I moved on to the next step, I made sure to seal everything in with an acrylic matte varnish. And I made sure that this goes over everything. It needs to cover everything nice and solid so that if you do make any mistakes in the next few steps, it's gonna be easier to clean up if you need to. I then went through the entire model and I placed the decals in the correct places. I spoke to Redbutt Girly Man and he did tell me that this is when he wrote the codex for all the Space Marines. This is exactly where he wanted the actual transfers to go onto his space marines however a lot of the warhammers people seem to put them in the wrong place but that's okay he's not too cross with them i found a couple of words in one of my transfer sheets and i stuck that on as well i don't know what they mean i just stick them on because they look cool and apparently these guys like to have lots of words on their body speaking of words you should probably leave some words in the little square box that youtube gives you to leave words at the bottom of this video once i got all of my decals pretty much stuck on and looking good I gave that another clear coat just to set them in so that I don't have a weird color between the decal and the flat of the paint that's underneath them. I then went back into the model again, but this time with white. And this is a bit of a controversial stage, but this is how I like to paint my models. I like this high contrast look. I like it to be bold. I like it to stand out like a sore thumb. I don't like boring edges. I want sharp freaking bright edges if you like this look then do this look if you don't like this is the time where you change the color from white to a different color because you don't like this look so don't do this basically i go through everything that has a highlighted edge that would be facing upwards pretty much sometimes it's good to highlight some of the bottom edges as well because not in all places but some places you may lose a bit of detail just because of the shades and shadows and things so you can use the white to bring out some of those things which is a good way to emphasize certain stuff that you want to emphasize i then go through the entire model with black and this is to paint back all the black of the areas that are not going to be the armor color anymore and this is just going to help me at least to visualize how it's going to look but as well as it's also going to help me lay the next layers down because if you give a black base coat you can leave some of that black around the edge when you paint the little things on top of that and it helps to give it a little bit more of a framed look looking a bit more professional not that i know what professional looks like but it looks better just take my word for it I then used the same bloody stuff I put on the base as I always have and while that was drying I quickly took what was left on my brush and used my airbrush to spray it across the feet of this robot man boy and this just gives like an effect that he has been kicking up some of the dirt and it is just kind of spattered along his feet. I then put a rim around my base which was probably too early because I ended up having to do this maybe two or three times because I kept on painting over it. but. Don't forget to put a rim on your base. If you forget it, then it's not my fault. At the end of the day, I've told you already, just do it. And then if you have to do it again at the end, do it again at the end. But at least if you've done it, you're halfway there. I use a wash to go over this stuff once it had dried. This stuff kind of crackles on the base and it makes it kind of look a little bit rocky and stuff like that. And then I use that matte varnish one last time just before I start working on any metallic pieces just because any of the metallic bits will become dull and look a little bit poo poo if you spray a matte varnish over the top of it after you had painted them. This is how the robot boy looks before I started doing any of the metallics. I started off with the emblem on his chest, the mark of the Imperium which is just an eagle that basically is just spread out with a little bit of a 
skull head it's a weird looking eagle but let's just say it's an eagle i painted all the little rockets that are all over the model and this is the part where i was mentioning about how if you leave a black base coat it makes it easier for you to paint in and it kind of frames the edges so if you just paint the parts that are sticking up it kind of frames the edges and makes it look a little bit more believable that you painted the whole thing all fancily I took dark silver and I went in and I draw brushed all the black bits inside around the armored area. So basically all the robot parts or the mechanical bits, I used that dark silver as my base layer, which was just going to be giving a shine to the edges of everything inside there. At this point, if I get some of it on the armor, it's not the end of the world, but I am doing my best not to get it on the armor. I then took a shining silver which is a much brighter silver and I caught a couple of edges that I thought were a bit more important to make stand out. So not all edges needed to stand out but some of them do and that's pretty much where I ended up calling the model done. It's not though is it because I haven't even painted his gun. Now if you are able to hear me over the lawnmowers going on in the background, then I would like to say super special thank you for making it to the end of another video. And hopefully you managed to pick up some kind of hints and tricks about how you might paint your own Space Marine Redemptor Dreadnought. And if you did, make sure to share it with your grand because I bet she probably would like to learn those tricks as well. I would also like to say a super special thank you to my Patreons and to all the viewers who support the channel. When I started this channel, I never thought that I would ever get anywhere with it. And to be honest, really, I'm not really sure I still will. However, we are growing and it is super exciting for me to see people that are actually excited about what I'm excited about. And I'm super happy to share this with everybody. Now, if you're enjoying the videos and you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is watch the next video suggested at the end of this video, as well as leave some words in the little box that YouTube gives you to leave words at the bottom of this video. And of course, if you want to support even further than that, the next best thing you can do is look into my Patreon. If you join the Patreon, you get access to our private Discord, which has the best group of 3D printers and painters that ever did exist upon the internet. And if you're sick and tired of Facebook being full of crap and idiots answering the dumbest things to your questions, then that Discord is the best place for you to be. Or if you just want to share your makes with us, as well as have a couple of friends who have the same interests as you. Now, we are at the end of the video, and I do need to say a super special thank you to those Patreons who do support and keep the lights blinding my eyeballs. And so I'm saying thank you. Also, if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, and you shared it with your gran and they didn't like it either, the best thing you can do for yourself is to just throw your computer out the window, actually, and then just f*** off after that. There was another Space Marine video. They'd better enjoy the Space Marine videos because there will be more Space Marine videos.